Good morning. It's 11 o'clock in Montana on Sunday. Not as nice a morning as what we've had the last couple of days. Let's see here. Let's get that going. Hello. Gonna adjust this just a little bit to show you what I have, what I'm working on here. Can you guys hear me okay? I have uh, my kiln is running and my kiln vent is right over there. Can you see right there? And, uh, and the vent's running. It's not terribly loud in the room, but it might be on your end. Hi. Hi, Dory. Uh, so, this is what I'm making. I'm making, uh, I have these drop tray forms. And I had uh, roll, I rolled out this slab and did this drop tray a couple of days ago. I've had it saved in my damp box, and then I moved it into my plaster damp box. Uh, I rolled out a slab uh, so that I could make the individual parts to compartmentalize these. And this is really pretty leather. I mean, it's pretty stiff. It's not. You know, it's not super soft by any means. Uh, and so I have, I'm keeping my, thank you, uh, I, I'm keeping the drop tray in the form, even though it's totally, see it's totally loose. Uh, it's separated from the form, but it helps give support while I'm in here uh, adding the dividers. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys just real quick, this is going to be kind of on the short side of the scopes. Um, I finished, I've done this one, which I've just decided to do on a third, two-third basis. Thanks very much for the hearts, that's nice. Uh, and I have already put it in, and you can see that that piece is cut wider than the top. What will happen is, once this is set up, I'll come back in with my sure form and I will balance that and make that level. It's a little hard to hold with one hand though. So uh, now on this other one, I only have two of these forms, so I only, I don't have a lot of, I didn't actually. Um, I, I had a friend of mine who used to be part of the Etsy Mud Team, Matt. He was uh, Moss Beach Ceramics. He's not on there anymore, unfortunately. Uh, he had some really great stuff that he used to do, uh, but he made these drop forms for me. And I'm hoping that uh, I've maybe found someone who can help me with that. I've got, I've got the tools and I can do it, it's just a matter of time for me. Um, and so I'm going to have more of these made so that I can do more than just two at a time. <laughs> I'm also going to, I've had some requests, this when it's finished is about seven and a quarter inches wide by about 17 or so inches long when it's fully glazed. Hi Judy! Um, and I've had some requests for some that were narrower and longer and I think that's a neat idea. The issue of course is kiln space so I can't really go super long. Uh, I had someone recently contact me for a 33 inch tray and there's unfortunately there's just no way to do that. Um, so in any case, so this is what I did. I took my fairly hard slab that I rolled out at the same time that I rolled these other slabs uh, so that they were all the same uh, set level of dryness. Have to be careful with that though because it's all sitting on wood. And then I take my handy dandy cheap staples ruler that I can see through and I cut strips just the width of that so that Hi Victoria, just watched your steampunk vase. I can't wait to see that finish. That's really awesome. Um, I am cutting this this way. And then I was thinking I was at about a 45 degree angle, but I'm a little bit more than that. You can see that seems to, that's a little bit more than, not, than 45. So I've cut these to size and I have fine tuned. As you can see I've got little bits of clay here and my handy dandy exacto knife uh, and the other thing I want to show you which is pretty cool this is my slip 
and in my slip I have some fiber. Oh, and let me grab it real quick. Oh, isn't that funny? I thought it was right here. hysterical. I was going to show you this fiber that I put in my slip, which is in a bag somewhere. And yeah, it's a, it's like a fiberglass, Judy. Um, I really want to show it to you. So I'm going to take a second and see if I can locate it because it was just here. So this is a little weird. This is kind of like paper clay. This is the mark on the bag. Okay. And I know it's upside down and I'm sorry, but it's open. And it is this super fine fiberglass kind of material. And you hardly need any of it. It goes a really long way. And I mix it with my throwing slip and my other slip. Oh, Judy, did you drop out? Did you see the fiber? If you can see, you can see it kind of the little bits of hairs that are coming off my slip here. That's that fiber. So it looks, it works kind of like paper clay. Um, and it's, but the, the strands are longer uh, and they get pretty. Oh, you wanted a screenshot. Okay, it's upside down, so you have to flip it over. Great. Is that you? Yep. Okay. Good. So that's the one. Hi, Maude. How are you? I'm going to have to move that just a little bit so I can read that a little better. So, so here we go. I've already scored the inside of the tray. I've also, of course, used this to measure. This is my ruler to measure where I want these to line up. Uh, this one I wanted on a third, two-thirds scale. This one I'm doing straight thirds. Um, and I've pretty much scored everything up. Yes, <laughs> I think we all are today. <laughs> uh, nope, no templates. It's all, I just measure it. Uh, and uh, just start out with a straight piece. So I'll show you that. So. I cut that. The problem, see, the reason I don't use the templates is as these dry, if they warp a little bit in any one direction, uh, then the template doesn't do me any good and I have to fine tune it anyway. So I just cut my piece. So I have my strip just like that. And, uh, this out of the way for a second yeah and then I take my uh, take my tool and I kind of estimate a 45 ish degree angle and uh, if I've already cut one it's handy because then I can line it up for my width and uh, cut it out and then I just place it and fine-tune it and it's honestly fast as fast or faster than a template would be so see how I could just fit that right in there so for me, it's always, I always make a little bit of extra because sometimes I get a little heavy handed. Um, and I'm also really easily distracted. So I tend to be doing something here and looking over here. And uh, yeah, then I tend to break stuff that way. So, um, so again, uh, I guess the last thing you should know that the ingredient in my slip, uh, besides that fiber and the actual clay body that I use, uh, and then I use vinegar. Uh, so I use the throwing slop and I use dry clay uh, to add body to it and I use vinegar and I blend the heck out of it. And then I put, uh, I 
think I put the fiber in last. I mixed the fiber last so it didn't get bound up in my blender. Yeah, exactly. Slip slop. Uh, and then I hand mixed with just a, you know, a spoon the fiber in. And then I am re ready to go. And I have, you know, I have a huge bucket of this right now. And so I have, this will last me quite a long time. And I want to measure this out. So I know just with the way that uh, these are drying right now, I want to be at five and three quarters inches. And I am, and that looks level as I'm looking down the line. And I, the thing with these, because they are not, they're leather. They're definitely leather. They're not bone yet, which is good. But I want to be sure I wiggle that so I make that connection as strong as I can. And then I also have my handy modeling tool that I come in and I go along the edges to make sure I get as much of that slip and fiber in that joint and get it compressed. Yeah, I love them too, Victoria. They're amazing. I use them for pretty much everything. I use them when I throw. I use them when I assemble pieces. Uh, so get that in there. And I have actually, I, I think I'm on my third set. I've worn the heck out of them. So get that in there. Now, like I said, I will pretty much leave these alone to set up. I'll put them back in the plaster damp box for them to set up for a little while and then I'll come back and I'll fine tune this and clean this up and make it all one level, smooth. Uh, this particular set I'm doing kind of like a blank canvas. I want to come back and do my decal. Well, it's not so much brushes as modeling tools. They are, they come in a set and none of them are marked, so I'm sorry, I can't give you a brand name. But they're about the length of a pencil. Yep, silicone tip. And uh, I, have, I have them pretty much within reach everywhere I go in my studio. Uh, so I have several sets. I've got one that's extremely worn out and just about to fall apart. Uh, but I just love them so much. They work so good. And it seems like they were the set itself was something like $15 US. About. <laughs> so I am coming in and pulling out, yeah, pretty much anybody. So I'm going to come in and pull out some of that excess slip. Also pushing any that I can into that edge, into that corner. And so now you can kind of see that one's done. It's a bit of a mess. I'll clean it up. But this is, so this is one of my favorite things to do. Primarily, I am a wheel throw, I'm a wheel person. I throw almost all of my pots. But I have a love for uh, these drop trays because they give me a, a canvas that is flat. There's something about the rounded surface that always makes me a little intimidated to draw on, but the flat surface is uh, less intimidating maybe. And so this particular set is going to be one that I work some, uh, some more illustrated type work as opposed to just decals. Uh, so see really sloppy get lots of that stuff in there. I saw uh, Simon at Woodfire, uh, Simon Levin doing his demo on his handles, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, I love his handles. He's got amazing handles on his cups. Um, and he hardly uses any water at all, which is awesome that he can do that. I think that uh, I may be in some ways don't do that. Thanks, Victoria. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for coming by. I can't wait to see your vase when it's done. Um, so, 
this is uh, definitely that I have to use. <laughs> I have to use lots of slip. I'm not big into the water, but I do like the vinegar and the slip. So I really goobered that one up. So I'm going to pull some of that out right away here. So, and I also got really excited with my scoring, it looks like. So I'll get in there and smooth that out as well. Sorry if I'm missing your comments. Apologize. Looking down, I'll do that. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show... Hard slabs are really fun to work with, uh, so it, you get to do some more interesting shapes with them sometimes. You can do more architectural shapes with them sometimes. Um, boxes are really fun to make with hard slabs. You can get some really interesting angles. Uh, and so that is something that's a little bit outside my norm that I really, really enjoy. Yeah, thanks Rich, appreciate it, Rich and Mary. And tell me. Hello, Ale Pottery. Oh, I've got a little clay goober, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to go throw these in the damp box. That's all done. That's installed now. And it's all, as you can see, has a lot of cleanup to do, but the cleanup's much easier and less uh, challenging on the joints once it's set up a little bit. I tend to tweak these out. They tend to want to wave if I try and mess with them too much right now. And again, this, just to give you a sense of how dry that is, you know, it'll bend, but it's pretty, pretty solid, pretty stiff, so. All right, everybody, that's what I'm doing today. Get these out of these drop plates and get some more slabs thrown so I can make more drop plates. Oh, and again, with the funny shirt collection, wanted mud slingers, right? This is another Potter's Council. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever day it is. It's Sunday here, and uh, I think we're going to go try and be outside a bit this afternoon. So take care. Talk to you later. Bye.